I got a big fish. Oh, I got a big fish. Oh, holy crap, dude. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Bama Saltwater Fishing episode. If this is your first time tuning in to the channel, what is going on? I welcome you. If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, go ahead and hit it down below this video. This would be a great time to do so. It's free and allows you to keep up with some great entertaining content. Big mullet and predator fish just chasing it. I don't know what it was, but that's cool during the intro. So, but I went cast net early this morning. The sun's still behind the clouds because we have a pretty rainy overcast day. So I couldn't get any footage of that, but I got some finger mullet. I even caught a couple shrimp in the cast net. And then I have a bunch of small pinfish and some little bitty shiners. But what I'm gonna be using today is a simple Carolina rig. I have a three quarter ounce egg sinker. If I need to upgrade, I can, but the current and the tide doesn't look too bad come into a small barrel swivel 12 inches of yozuri fluorocarbon and this is 15 pound yozuri fluorocarbon and the hook i'm using is a size 2 mewtwo light owner circle hook now the setup i got is a seven foot medium fast saint croix avid inshore rod i have a shimano stratic 3000 and i have it spooled up with 15 pound yozuri super braid so i'm going to get baited up probably i'm going to start out with the finger mullet because those are some of the best bait you can use and drop down and there's a chance to catch a mangrove snapper redfish flounder bluefish spanish chance of catching a bunch of different stuff so that's enough talking let's get into some fishing now once again i have my angle live bait cooler here with the angle aerator I've had this one forever it's made it through hurricane sally it's made it through a bunch of different crap and it's still going it keeps my bait nice and lively Oh, there, he just made a selection for me. My finger mullet jumped out. <laughs> That's an excellent bait for pretty much anything big and predator fish. So redfish, flounder, speckled trout, I love finger mullet. But we got old Fred, the great blue heron, one of many over here already. It doesn't take him long to find us fishermen. I'm gonna put this finger mullet on and see what we can do here. But I'm gonna take my circle hook and go through both of their lips through the bottom. And there is a great bait right there. Okay, let's drop it down and see what we can get. Let's do a parallel cast to the wall here. I did bring my 5000 Shimano Stratic on the 7 foot medium heavy St. Croix in case I see some stuff busting or if there's some bigger fish that's breaking me off. But right now I am starting out on this lighter setup. That, as always, that sunrise is beautiful coming over the horizon there. Man, you're getting closer, huh? <laughs> that's funny. He's cleaning his beak. I'm pretty sure that's what they do when they're rubbing their beak against something hard. You see them doing it against pier pilings and stuff too, but they're cleaning all the crap off their beak. Well, something chewed on it. You can see that. Don't know what. Now I did put on a little bitty shiner instead of the finger mullet because it was just one of the first things I grabbed. I've caught some big trout on these baits right here. So they're not that hardy as a finger mullet is, which means they don't live as long. So I'm trying to use these up because my finger mullet will last longer on the aerator. But I don't think it's gonna be very long before this thing gets eaten by something. Like right now. Got it. Got it. I told you that wasn't very long before it got eaten by something. That was a dang ladyfish, man. Okay, well, at least I knew what that was. At least I got to see them little shiners do not last long whatsoever in the aerator or pretty much in any live well unless you have constant raw water going. But they do not last long in the water either on your hook. You just saw I dropped it down and on the fall got eaten. They're really great bait. But I'm going to grab another bait. Whatever I grab is kind of like bait roulette in the angle right now and uh, cast back out. Just put another one of those little shiners on there cast it down I'm telling you cast that's a good investment you don't have to go wait at the bait shop in the early in the morning when the water's warm there's tons of bait everywhere you feel pretty accomplished when you land a nice fish on bait that you caught yourself i got something on oh that was a crab <laughs> you could you could feel it when it's a crab complete dead weight something just grabbed onto it hold let's see yep all right I'm gonna drop it back down. I'm 99.9% .9 positive that was a little crab of some sort. There's a lot of those stone crabs around here. There's a fish. Got, oh man, dang. That's a big one. 
<laughs> what do I got? Come on. Oh, man. What is that? Nice mangrove. He might be a freaking keeper. <laughs> oh, man. On the live bait. Check out that mangrove snapper. Heck yeah, dude. I'm going to measure them and see. They got to be 12 inches in Alabama. All right. And he made the 12 inch mark, so we're gonna take this one home. Beautiful fish, check that out. Big old mangrove snapper, gray snapper, black snapper. They got a bunch of different names, so, but I call them mangroves. This is my absolute favorite fish to eat along with the flounder. I got my other angle here. This is my other angle live bait cooler. This is a 30 quart, but I got ice in here because it works great as a little bitty cooler. So I'm gonna throw them on ice. Let's get you buried in ice. You always wanna take care of your cat. And he ate that little bitty shiner, so. But right now, I'm, like I said, I'm just playing bait roulette. It's whatever I grab out of the angle or whatever jumps out. So pretty cool. I could use a few more of those. Probably take them home and cook them on the grill. Show you a cool way of doing that. Let's see if we can get some more. This is a little tape measure I use. I always have some sort of measuring device. Oh yeah, I forgot I did. Oh, dang it. So I did catch a shrimp in my casting. I actually caught two and I almost lost them because it was really dark and I didn't see anything. And then I saw a little light reflecting on the sand and I was like, heck yeah, I got a shrimp. So nothing big, but perfect size for bait. Very lively. I'm gonna drop this shrimp down. I almost forgot about them. I don't give this thing hardly any time before it gets smacked by something. Ooh. There's a fish. <sighs> see what you are. Come on, buddy. Oh, wow. Hmm. Well, you know, to be honest, I don't know what that is. <laughs> There's not too many fish. I don't know what it is, but I don't know what that is. So I will look it up. It's got some white spots along it. Doesn't have any teeth. So I don't think it's any type of grouper, which I've caught little bitty gag grouper here, but this isn't a gag. It spit back up my shrimp. Well, it's gonna go back. So there you go. Took a picture of it. I asked one of my good friends, Mr. David Thornton. I'll send him a text and see what kind of fish that is. Okay, quick update. I just sent a message to Mr. David Thornton. If you fish on the pier a lot and are a pier at, you know him by Pier Pounder. He's a true Alabamian local and is, absolutely knows his stuff about fishing. He's a great man. And uh, he quickly responded back. So apparently that was a soap fish. I said, I told him, uh, do you know what this is? Incredibly slippery. <laughs> and he said, it's a soap fish. Very descriptive of this slightly toxic slime. It secretes through the skin when stressed. Wash your hands well after handling. So I appreciate you, Mr. David. And that makes a whole lot of sense why that slime on that fish dried up and just felt incredibly sticky. It doesn't really have any smell, but I knew I never caught that before and I knew it wasn't a grouper. There's always a chance of catching something new when you're fishing saltwater because you never know what you're gonna get, like I said before. I appreciate you, Mr. David Thornton, once again for helping me out on that fish ID. So I'm gonna get back to fishing. The big boat, the Explorer, big old head boat. Oh, there's a good bite. Ah, got it. Got it. Ah, took me into its home. Come on. Dang it. Took me into the rocks. Come on. Sometimes you can free line them and let them swim out, which means you open your bail and just let it swim. But this one feels pretty stuck. Dang. Ah, I lost it. It's gone. All right, I gotta tie up again. Dang it. So I'm gonna switch to this half ounce here. See if I can get hung up a little less. Get my 15 pound Yozuri fluorocarbon. Grab another owner Muti light circle hook, size two. Tie this on and we'll have a good Carolina rig going again. By the way, if you haven't ever used one of these Plano Edge boxes, it's a waterproof box here. Organizes my terminal tackle and all my lures nicely. Keeps them nice and protected too because if you invest money in your tackle, you need to invest money in protecting your tackle. I don't get them for free and I'm not sponsored by them, but they're just a Plano Edge. But they're pretty tough boxes. They are kind of pricey, but I'll link them down in the uh, description below if you want to pick you up one if you're looking for a good solution to store all your tackle. Grabbed a, another small croaker this time. Hook it through the cartilage in the nose. And these are just little spot croaker, hence a spot behind their gill. And drop it down this half ounce weight this time. I ah, got it. Got something pulling pretty good. 
little bitty mangrove little baby definitely not a keeper but pretty fish pretty little mangrove snapper toss them back can't keep it let's get another one put on another finger mullet it's a big finger mullet there good bait there's a bite got it mm. dang good fish <laughs> good fish mm. good fish D don't tell me it took me in its home don't tell me <laughs> did it ah it took me down dang it man it's still on see if he'll get out doubt it there i got it out oh. got it out got it out heck yeah <laughs> yo that's a stud mangrove <laughs> And I got it back and I got it out. <laughs> That's a stud mangrove on the finger mullet, dude. Oh man, check that out. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, just got this really nice mangrove snapper. So I'm gonna throw it on ice with the other one. Came up to 13 and a half inches, so it's a keeper for sure. It's a thick one though. I almost lost it. This pinfish here. I'm gonna cast this pinfish out that way. I got a big fish. Oh, I got a big fish. Oh, holy crap, dude. I need to catch up to this fish. I need to catch up to this fish. <laughs> just a hair. Ah. Sorry, I'm not talking much. That just took me by surprise. This is a pretty nice fish. I'm curious to see what it is. <laughs> I really should have been throwing it on that combo. <laughs> That's my big one. All right, it's right here at the wall. If I can get it up. Yeah. getting up in that grass it didn't like coming in it did not like coming in it's my leader that i'm mainly concerned about i was surprised i got it in that quick it did not like being close to the seawall this is where uh this is where you regret not throwing it on the bigger rod it is just sitting on the bottom can't really put any more pressure on it like i am see my hands are shaking because i'm holding it pretty dang tight there it goes that had to be a stingray i tightened down that drag and then i was like if it's gonna pop off it's gonna pop off there's there's no way that was really anything else a redfish i can turn its head even on a 3000 size reel even if it's a big bull red that thing just went and sat on the bottom it was a stalemate between me and that fish or stingray i'm i'm 99 sure that's what that was hey i'm happy with these two fish so i'm gonna take these home clean them up and do a pretty cool catch and cook on the grill so let me throw those back on ice head home and we'll go do some grilling now i'm gonna keep these whole so first thing i want to do is get the scales off of them so i'm just gonna take the back of my dexter fillet knife here everybody has a different way of doing it this is just my way of doing it a spoon works pretty good and they do make different types of fish scalers. But I just use the back of my Dexter filet knife and it works just fine. Make sure you have a water hose handy and it helps to do it outside. So I'm in the scales off and I'll go back and check to make sure I got them all off. And then I'll do this one and we'll move on to the next step. So I have both these fish scaled on both sides of them. Now I'm gonna take one of them and I'm gonna cut the head off along with the gut. Spray everything off. Now I've cut the head off this mangrove snapper and it is almost ready to be cooked. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other one here. I do wanna do one more thing with these and that's score it. Anytime you cook these fish whole, I like to score them. You get a lot better and even cooking here of the meat. And you also get all that flavor all the way down to the meat and the bones. Just cross hatch it on both sides, really easy to do. Having a sharp knife helps a lot. So that one's done. i do the same thing here. Both these fish are scored. So they're gonna go on ice. We're gonna go over our grill. And get ready to cook simple ingredients i have some sliced lemon a couple slices of butter salt and pepper i have some of this louisiana garlic butter sauce anything by louisiana is good and then i have some chef paul's shrimp seasoning here which is not just for shrimp it's pretty much for all seafood so i can't wait to use this i usually use the seafood magic but i like to change it up every now and then so i have some of this shrimp seasoning got two pieces of aluminum foil i'm gonna get the non-stick side and I want to make it a little wider. So I'm going to take the middle and pretty much create a seam. Now that's a big piece of aluminum foil for one of these fish. We've got one beautiful mangrove snapper here. First thing I want to do is season the fish. Well, before I put the butter sauce on, so I'm going to take some pepper on both sides. 
Now I'm gonna take some salt, nothing crazy. Use salt to taste. See, I don't like that much salt, so I use very little. But if you like a lot of salt, then you can add more. Okay, now that we salt and peppered, I'm gonna take a little bit of the Chef Paul's in my hand. I'm gonna season this on both sides with the Chef Paul's shrimp seasoning here. Nothing too crazy, like I said. It's all to taste. Now we have our seasoned fish, salt, pepper, and Chef Paul's shrimp seasoning. I'm gonna take this garlic butter sauce by Louisiana and spread some on top here. This is what it's gonna cook in. I wanna get it all in the meat, mixed in with that seasoning, and flip it, add a little bit more. Now that we have the whole fish coated, I'm gonna take just another stick of butter, stick it on the inside of that fish, take a few lemon slices, and then I wanna close up my foil to make it so it can steam on top of these coals. Make like a little area so all your butter and juices do not come out from the bottom. Make sure you close it from the top. Extremely easy to do. And I'm gonna throw this one on the grill and do the same thing on the other snap. I want it right on top of my heat source. So the aluminum foil will allow it not to burn or stick. Now, these are both on the coals, wrapped up. I'm gonna close my lid and we'll wait. 10 to 15 minutes is more than enough time for those fish to cook thoroughly. And we'll come back, take a look at them, and then start eating. It's been 12 minutes, so 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the thickness of the fish and the grill. So I'll come back in 12. I'm gonna take these off the grill. It's probably gonna be pretty hot, so. Woo! Yeah, yeah, it's pretty hot. Yeah, there. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit and cool down before I open them, but man, are they gonna be good. But aluminum foil doesn't really get that hot, but also be very mindful and cautious to not burn yourself. Usually having a pair of tongs or some sort of oven mitts to pick up a hot piece of metal here usually helps. So just be cautious picking up something hot off the grill. Okay, let's open one of them up. Man, it looks really good and it smells freaking delicious. So I'm gonna get the other one opened up here. This looks so good. I'm, I can't wait to eat it. It's still pretty hot. It's cooled down just enough for me to be able to try a bite. So I'm gonna try one. I'm gonna take me a piece here. It's still pretty hot, but it looks so good. Mm-hmm. Woo, that's hot. <laughs> but it's freaking delicious. Mm. That could be in a restaurant somewhere and people would order a lot of it because that tastes good. And that's not just because I cooked it, but it actually tastes really good and you cannot beat the freshness of this fish. I just caught it this morning. It actually never went inside. The fish stayed outside. I cleaned it, it stayed on ice, and then put it on the grill. You get me another bite here. Look at that piece of white flaky fish. Mangrove snapper, so good. Blow on it, because it's still hot. Mm. Adding some black pepper on there before you add all your seasoning gives a nice little bit of a kick to where it all brings everything together. That garlic butter, you can never go wrong with that. And lemon is always good, squeezed on top of fish. And so that lemon actually cooked with it and the flavor was absorbed into the meat. Perfect. But I highly recommend that Chef Paul's shrimp seasoning. I usually use the seafood magic, but you really can't go wrong with any Chef Paul's seasoning. But that shrimp seasoning actually went really well with the nice flaky sweet meat like these mangrove snappers. I appreciate you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go hit that like button and that share button down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button down below. It's free to do and allows you to keep up with some great, fun, and entertaining content. And we can do more catching cooks like this. And you can learn how to cook what you catch out here in the beautiful Gulf of Mexico. We'll see you on the next video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.